Hey yo, what's good everyone? Welcome to my channel. This is Mauro and today we're gonna react to Geography Now Turkey. This is gonna be very interesting because I plan to visit this beautiful country very soon. You know, I love history so which other country could give me more of a bus than Turkey? Come on, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Since the first Roman Empire through the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire. Oh my god, too much history, too much history in this beautiful country, you know, since ancient Greece, come on, oh my god. So yeah guys, let's not waste too much time, let's check out the video that is pretty long. Hey Geography Peeps, Barb's here. Get your Geography Now merch at GeographyNow.com. So for this episode you're gonna Dude, notice that- what the fuck? wait, wait, what, what? Look at that fucking chest, oh my god, my man is working out. Hey Geography Peeps, Barb's here. Get your Geography- He's fucking jacked! Deal! Yeah, merch at geographynow.com. So for this episode, you're gonna notice that uh, there's gonna be some continuity errors. For example, I'm clean shaven here. In the episode, I'm not. That's because uh, for this episode, I had to film out of sequence over the course of two weeks in five different countries. However, long story short, these days, I'm trying to kind of travel to the last countries of our alphabet. And you know, I found a really good cheap flight ticket to Turkey. So uh, long story short, it kind of ended up going like this. Hey mom. What? Wanna go to Turkey? What? <laughs> oh my god, the map looks exactly like him. That's crazy. Wow. Turkey is just too beautiful. Oh my god. Istanbul. Yeah, I went to Turkey for this episode. That's amazing. It's time to learn oh my god, I wanna go right now! I wanna go now! Alright, just like we did with the Togo episode, here's another video shot on location. Here we are in Turkey. I'm gonna feature mm. a lot of you guys, the Turkish geography peeps, in this video as well. And who better to feature than my go-to Turk, Mr. Ege, aka Eggy Boy. Hell yeah, man. So I actually met Ege a few years ago when I did the heritage trip. We had an 18-hour layover in Istanbul. I was 14. Yeah, you wow. were like 14. I don't usually meet up with kids unless they have, a, you know, an adult supervisor. <laughs> I don't want to be the creepy guy that meets up with kids. You're like a chubby little kid and now you're like a emo punk rock star. Look at you, man. You grew up. <laughs> Thank you. I promised him five years ago he could be in the turkey episode. You kept your promise. Kept my promise. You're the best man. Five years later. That was the best. That was the worst high five ever. Well, Ege drove me around parts of Turkey and helped with this video, so he's going to co-host. <laughs> also, you are officially <laughs> the youngest person ever to co-host a Geography Now episode. Hey, man. So, I'm just 19. Yeah, there you go. Well, Eggy boy, you ready to pop this turkey into the oven? Oh, yeah, you're getting full meal with this episode. <laughs> full meal. <laughs> So the domain that Turkey sits on today is riddled with thousands of years of transition and the map has mm. changed a lot. Our land has always been the junction point between so many cultures, eras, and empires throughout history. It would take way too long to explain, but basically... It goes all the way back to somewhere around 10,000 BC in one of the oldest known towns on Earth, Çatalhöyük, dating about 6200 BC, was established. What? And from there it was like the Bronze Age, the Hittites, the Phrygians, wow. Persians, Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Seljuks, Ottomans, and then finally, the Republic that stands today. Lots of stuff. First, let's jump into the map and see what Turkey administers today. Turkey is a transcontinental country located right at what is considered the boundaries between Europe and Asia. Asia. The vast majority of the country lies on the Anatolian Peninsula straddled between the Black Sea to the north, the Mediterranean to the south, and the Aegean to the west. This is considered the Asia part of Turkey. In antiquity, it was even called Asia Minor. As for the Europe part, we go to the Thrace Peninsula, which connects to the Balkans, separated by the Bosphorus Strait, the Sea of Marmara, and the Dardanelles off the Gallipoli Peninsula from the Asia part of the country. The the Thrace Peninsula only makes up 3% of the country's landmass, yet it holds about 10% of the country's population. The country's capital and second largest city is Ankara, also known as Angora in antiquity, and is located more inland in the Anatolian Peninsula. The largest, busiest, world-renowned financial hub and only- why is Ankara the capital and not Istanbul like it always was, like when it was Constantinople? It makes no sense, right? I, I don't know, I always wondered that. Why is not Istanbul the capital? I hope they will explain it. If they don't, please tell me down in the comments. I wanna know. The only transcontinental city in the world, though, would be the city of Istanbul. Classified as a megacity, it straddles both the European and Asian sides of the country across the Bosphorus. In antiquity, it was also known as Lagos, Byzantium, and Constantinople until it changed its name in 1928. Istanbul, of course, also hosts the busiest shipping port, the port of Haider Pasha, as well as the biggest and busiest airport, the newly finished Istanbul International, located on the north side of the city. If you flew to Istanbul prior to 2019, you probably arrived in At 
Ataturk International on the south side before they transferred all passenger operations to the new airport and made Ataturk a cargo hub. Otherwise, the country is divided into 81 provinces, or vilayet. Off the western coast in the Aegean, you notice there's a lot of islands. However, interestingly enough, all but two of them actually belong to Greece. These two right here. This was due to the Treaty of Athens in 1913, which clarified sovereignty over the Aegean. This has been a source of contention for maritime boundaries and access for Turkish ships trying to leave the west coast, and today it's still a little complicated. Nonetheless, Turks come and visit these islands all the time. It's not like there's a crazy conflict going on. Speaking of which, there's another dispute that they have with Syria over the Hatay province. This was the last I think province only, to join the only Cyprus, right? I mean, we did react to the episode of Cyprus a long time ago, but I still do remember there's like a, a line separating the Turkish part from the main island part. The main island where they speak Greek and the Turkish part is only the Turkish military. I think so. I don't I don't actually remember, but I think it's like that. Republic in 1939. Syria never formally recognized the referendum that the French officiated that gave it to Turkey, and today Syrian maps still show the Hatay province as theirs. Also, fun side note, we all know Turkey has a town named Batman, <laughs> in which the mayor literally tried to sue the director of Batman Begins. But Turkey also has some funny literal translated names. Yeah. These, uh, here, why don't you just go through some of them? Bolukesit, fish prisoner. Adiyaman, its name is bad. That literally means its name is bad. <laughs> yeah. Tokat, slap. It's, it just means slap. And the last and one. And Opium is Opium Black Fortress. Opium wow. Black Fortress. Yeah. It's where opium grows. In any case, going back to history though, Istanbul was essentially the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Barbarians invaded from the Danube, Arabs came from the southeast, even some Slavs came in from the Black Sea coast. It was chaos everywhere. It wasn't until the 11th century you started to see fir the first Turkic peoples fully settling in what is now Turkey, starting with the Seljuk Empire, which was actually proso turkic but you get the point. So many things went back and forth until the 14th century when Osman I initiated the Ottoman Empire in the Bursa province area. You've probably heard of the Ottoman Empire. It lasted for about 600 years until the Balkan Wars leading up to World War I when all hell broke loose. The Treaty of Sev, which was signed and essentially attempted to carve out what was left amongst the allies from the Turkey Anatolia Peninsula. The thing is though, it's incredibly hard to carve out the heart and nucleus of an empire aka the Anatolian Peninsula. Not easy. In comes Ataturk. This guy is basically the father of modern Turkey who fought against partition forces and won and salvage the Anatolian Peninsula as a new Turkish Republic that would modernize, industrialize, and secularize, even though many people would still maintain Islamic core values. This would essentially make them the first Muslim-majority country to have secularism embedded in its constitution and a clause that stated that it could not be removed. And there have been five coups throughout history on the grounds that these principles were in danger. Anyway, back to the early 20th century, the transition from the Ottoman times to the Republic times was followed by lots of fighting, paranoia, proxy intervention, displacement practices, and bloodshed. We'll talk more about this later in the episode, but here's the deal. Whenever we make this bell sound, it means here are the Cliff Notes version of a hot button topic that we will not go too far into and you are welcome to discuss it in the comments. Obviously, we assume you will be writing civil words in lowercase letters. Of course. Of course. Until then, moving on. Okay, uh, what else do we have, Ege? Uh, well, Turkey joined NATO in 1952, yet also invaded Northern Cyprus in 1974 in retaliation to Greece's mm. coup. Also, the southeastern part of the country where the majority Kurdish population lives is where the PKK... Uh, geez, f it hasn't even been 10 seconds and already, like... Let's just move on. Yeah. In addition, Turkey has been one of the longest in limbo candidates for joining the EU. Anyway, it kind of went like this. Wow. Okay, Turkey, you've been a member of the Council of Europe. You're an associate. Oh, so... Well, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I've checked out that uh, I don't need a passport to travel to Turkey, so that might be the reason, right? Uh, the ECC. And you have a customs union with us. Good, good, good. But there are 35 chapters of criteria of EU ascension. And how many have you completed? Uh, 16. Uh... Hey, I took in a lot of refugees. Doesn't that make me look a little bit better? I mean, I'm holding one right now. Yeah, but there's other... Thing, stuff that, nah, yeah. We're suspending all negotiations until you figure it out. Ah, yeah, screw it. Here's another. We seriously need to move on from I don't know much political about talk and discuss something else because the comments get It's, it's a lot. Fire. Hey, I know, with all the history and unique regions, Turkey hosts a lot of notable sites of interest. To talk more on that, here's one mm. of our Turkish geography peeps to explain. Merhaba, hi guys, my name is Cansu and I would love to tell you about some of the wonderful places Merhaba is, uh, in Turkey. Yeah. First Hello, off, right? we are obviously a land of mm. history and there are hundreds of ancient sites wow. that date back thousands of years. Remember the famous Battle of Troy? Mm. Yep. The ancient 
Troy is in Turkey and people from the movie actually left the Trojan horse in Çanakkale. In addition, we have the Mount Nemrut head statues, Cappadocia's cave houses, Mardin sandstone building, Myra's rock tombs, and also the tomb of Santa Claus aka... Oh my god, Santa I wanna fucking yes, go right now! Born. That is so we beautiful! We have castles everywhere in wow. Turkey, in Ankara, Alanya, wow. Bodrum, Giresun, Kastamonu. And the only thing that oh outnumbers our castles is our... Oh, home. Turkish beds! Oh my god. I'm kind of an introvert. I'm a little bit shy in public, so I don't know, but I would want to try those Turkish beds. I mean, that seems pretty cool. Hamas. It's a huge part of our culture, and it's kind of a Turkish traditional bachelor slash bachelor party. And finally, mm. I'm sure everyone knows about Hagia yeah, Sophia, of course, our most of famous site in Istanbul, and it is very close to Blue Mosque, which is another stunning piece of architecture. And last but not least, oh let's not forget the Bazaar with 61 streets. Fuck, I wanna go right now. Teşekkürler. Umarım Türkiye'ye gitme fırsatınız olduğunda buraları görebilirsiniz. Bye. Thank you. What the? Oh my god, the language is so difficult, but I want to learn it. Come on. Oh my god, I'm falling in love already. With yeah, that was a lot of info, and we barely even started the episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, tone things down a bit and go into the least crazy part of this episode. Let's show the natural <laughs> side of Turkey, the land. The land. <laughs> So Turkey <laughs> love this will always find a way to shock you. Uh, one minute you're in a hazelnut forest and the next you're in a rock forest. It's, it's a lot. So much extreme terrain, let's explain in the motion graphic. First of all, Turkey lies right at the convergence of the African, Eurasian, and Arabian plates, converging at the North and East Anatolian fault lines. This essentially creates their own mini plate known as the Anatolian plate, which is technically being pushed counterclockwise as the Arabian plate pushes up and the African plate subducts under the Cyprus arc. This means Turkey is subject to occasional earthquakes and has geothermal activity, although the majority of their volcanoes are wow. dormant or extinct in activity. All these fault lines are what contribute to 80% or so of the country being mountainous with three main ranges. The Pontic Mountains and yeah, that is crazy. It looks like 80% like or so this looks exactly like my city. That's crazy. Of the country being mountainous with three main ranges. The Pontic Mountains in the north, the Taurus Mountains in the south. In between both of these, you find the Anatolian Plateau. And finally, to the far east, you find the Aras Mountains. This is the highest region of Turkey with the highest peak, Mount Ogridog. Mm. Or more. Wait, isn't that where um, the Noah Sarg allegedly ended up? commonly known as Ararat, which is actually a dormant compound volcano. From these mountains, the mighty- Am I tripping right now? I think that is actually, I mean, at least in the Bible, right? It says that. The rivers of Turkey flow, the longest one completely in Turkey, being the Kizlirmak or Red River, which empties into the Black Sea. It's also important to note that the source of the famous Euphrates and Tigris rivers are in Turkey as well. They flow down from the mountains and feed millions to the Middle East below. Also in this eastern area, you can find the largest lake of the country, Lake Van, in the eastern Armenian highlands as well. Basically, each of the regions has their own unique distinct terrain and microclimate. The North Black Sea coast is the most lush with forests and receives the most rainfall. The Thracian Peninsula and Marmara regions are the flattest part of the country. The Aegean and southern coasts have a Mediterranean climate. The central Anatolian plateau is like the grain harvest belt of Turkey. The southeastern parts closer to Syria and Iraq are more dry and arid. And of course in the far east you find the tallest mountains and the coldest weather. Specifically the town of Erzurum which takes the title of the coldest place in Turkey. Also a side note, wow. remember Armenians are super sensitive with uh, Aradu or Mount Ararat. It's like sacred to them and it's on like their coat of arms and they name out all of their commercial products after it. Don't you live by a bunch of Armenians in Los Angeles? Yes, I do. How do you feel about uploading this video after you get it? <laughs> uh, no it's, it's LA Armenians. They're cool with me. Plus, they're like too busy with real estate and like rooftop graves. So, anywha. <laughs> there are so many other unique natural sites Turkey has locked away in their domain. Mm, Dude, Cappadocia is like a different planet. So many weird eroded formations. Now, this is usually the part where Noah comes way in. Way too but, much uh, to Obviously, be. he's not in Turkey. So, we're just going to take over his segment. Love you, Noah. Sorry, but we'll do your segment. So economically, so Turkey is definitely a regional powerhouse classified as an emerging economy by the World Bank. They were co-founders of the OECD and are part of the G20. They are mm. an upper middle income nation per Going capita. down. Uh, but anyway, by GDP standards. In fact, by market cap value, Enka, a construction firm, and Erdemir, a steel producer, usually rank in the top five largest companies in Turkey. Not far behind is Turkish Airlines, which has more international destinations than any other airline in the world at about 130. Wow. Yeah, this has made Istanbul the second busiest airport in the world in terms of international that passenger is crazy. traffic. Every year they get closer and closer to dethroning Dubai. Yeah, wow. no, 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 I'm fine. Yeah, no, I'm still the best 
ever, ever, that's ever existed. Shut up! In any case, Turkey is also a medical hotspot, specifically in the plastic and reconstructive surgery department. When walking around Istanbul, don't be shocked if you find a lot of men with bandages around their heads. Oh, yeah. Turkey is the hair transplant capital of the world. And here's Art really? to explain a little bit more because uh, he knows something. I would need that, I guess. <laughs> Bye! fucking forehead is way too hey wild. guys so as you know me and my family spend a lot of time in turkey so we had an idea and we did a thing we created a five-star vip medical tourism service called beauty mill where we provide hair transplants and over 70 other cosmetic procedures with our doctors in turkey yeah it's a really cool experience i was actually one of those guys i actually had hair transplants a lot of guys are weird to talk about it but i actually did get it done i was very happy with it check it out link in the description oh art being so transparent we love it Shut up. Yeah, we only promote businesses on these country episodes if the business is affiliated with the country or if it is from a small business from a subscriber so that you can support them. Anyway, thank you, Art. Turkey is also a world-renowned mineral and agriculture powerhouse. Today, they are the leaders in producing things like boron, pumice, feldspar. I don't even know what feldspar is. Apricots, cherries, figs, and the national pride crop. Oh, I love nuts. figs. Yeah, they say we're going to eat boron sandwiches. <laughs> nice product placement. Some of this agricultural production, though, has led to the overusage of underwater aquifer sources, which have led to massive of sinkholes speckled throughout the interior of the country. The Konya oh, yeah. province alone has over 300 of them, ranging in just a few meters wide to nearly 200. Yeah, they're really cool on the way to Alanya. Wow. Another thing you can find <laughs> in the environment are animals. And Gary Harlow obviously is not with us in Turkey, so... So, uh, Caleb has a baby and he has baby's duties to do today. So, uh, uh, Gabs, you're filling in. Let's just get it over with. No turkeys do not come from Turkey. The American <laughs> turkey got its name from Turkey because the European settlers thought it looked like a guinea fowl from Turkey. So they called it a turkey fowl, later shortened it to just turkey. And that's how we got turkey. Don't ask any more questions, all right? Turkey used to be one of the only few places that had both tigers around and lions around at the same time until they became locally extinct or permanently migrated out. Now, Turkey is the land of the cats. And it's estimated that Aww, Istanbul alone so has over 200,000 stray cats. They are treated nicely by the locals who feed and tend to them. This is why you will never see either mice, rats, cockroaches in any of the major cities in Turkey because the kitty cats. And if you're caught harming any of these stray cats, the community, oh brother, the whipping down. They love stray cats so much that they actually immortalize the beloved Tom Beely, the chill cat meme. Cat after she passed away in 2016, so sad. Nonetheless, despite having a love of cats, the national animal is actually the gray wolf. There's a saying to describe the Turkish soul, yes, a lion or a tiger may be stronger, but you'll never see a wolf in a circus. Think about it, just think about it. So that's all this the time we have saying. for me and this hat. I guess I gotta give it back, I just I'll, you know, I guess I'll just kind of give it back. I Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, fake Gary Harlow. And with that in mind, let's discuss the animals on people's plates. Turks are heavy meat eaters. Sorry, vegans. Which, of course, means we will now discuss the food of Turkey. We're talking about... Fuck vegans! Who the fuck cares about vegans? I mean, if you're a vegan, it's okay. That's your choice. I don't bother. If I want to eat meat, I eat meat. Fuck you. About the home <laughs> of uh, Jezen Ebrak guy. That guy is insane. Have I want seen? kebab! I want kebab! I want kebab and baklava. Come on, come on. Give it that. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me the fucking kebab. Come <laughs> the on. The size of the platter is that guy. <laughs> oh makes. my well, God. we don't have him with us right now, but we do have you guys, the Turkish geography peeps, to explain a little bit more on the food and cuisine of yeah. Turkey. Yeah, hey, come everyone. on. Give me some I'm kebab. Rabia. Hey, everyone. It's Furkan. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the food of Turkey. So, Turkish cuisine is based on a fusion of all the surrounding surrounding cultures they were in contact with throughout the history. You'll find hints of flavors and ingredients from Mediterranean, Central Asia, Caucasus and the Middle East. Fun fact, Swedish meatballs is actually originated from here. King Charles XII really? was on exile and brought back the recipe for köfte from Ottoman Empire. Also, wow. keep in mind we love putting yogurt on everything, especially if it's seasoned with things like garlic and mint. Actually, it's not yogurt, Ooh, like it's that. yogurt. Iskender, bamya dolması, lahmacun. Too fast! Too fast! Rabia! Don't fuck me rabbiare! <laughs> Don't make me get angry! <laughs> too fast! You cannot skip to kebab that fast! Come on, come on! Like and mint. Actually, it's not yogurt, it's yogurt. It's Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm craving it! I'm craving it! I'm craving it! It's Kender kebab! Look at that! Oh my god! Fuck, that looks so fucking delicious. Skandar, bamya dolması, lahmacun. Gelincik böreği, çapu taşı pilavı, mantı, çiğ köfte. Sarma, kuru fasulye, kısır, kokoreç, menemen, 
işkembe çorbası. And of course the most Yes! Yes! Wow, that looks so different. So you eat it on like the sticks. I mean, here in Italy, we always eat it like a sandwich, a big sandwich. It's always like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. Fuck. <laughs> oh my God, this is way too fucking delicious. I mean, I would guess that's even better to eat it on the stick, you know? It won't make you so fucking full like the whole huge sandwich. And I want baklava too, come on. Famous dishes you've probably heard of already. Donut and kebab. Keep oh, in mind, ash. you might have seen restaurants called donut kebab. There's no such thing. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because I think they, they are all immigrants uh, in Europe. They're all immigrants from Kurdistan. So it might be different, the, the cuisine that they bring to Europe. There's no Turkish people, I think, opening those kind of th stores here in Europe. I think there are two separate items, donar, which is cooked on a turning spit, and kebab, which is cooked on a skewer. This is the best part. Mm. We have a lot of desserts too. Turkish delight, lokum, which is quite famous, I guess. Kadayıf, künefe. Maraş ice cream, the first guy who's turned this thing. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sütlaç, düğülü haşhaş tatlısı. Bombas. Bombas! In market, wow. you might find Ottoman margin candy. Also, oh we have many God. drinks as well. For one, we are the... Wait, what happened to baklava? Are you fucking kidding me? That's like the best? Fucking sweet thing in the world. Oh my god. Whenever I go to eat kebab, always, always, no, I mean, not always, come on, or I will be 300 kilograms. But yeah, that's, oh my god. That's the thing, that's the thing. But I, I guess the other thing that they showed before, they're pretty similar. So yeah, I will guess. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know down in the comments. The highest consumers of tea out of any country in the world. And just like other yeah. nations in the Balkans, we love drinking our iron. We love drinking iron. We also have <laughs> things like drink. sherbet, salep, boza, shalgam, and rakı. And of course, if wow. you have the chance, try some Turkish coffee. Thank you. Yeah, Turkish coffee is not about the type of bean they use, but rather the way it's prepared. They will boil water in a jezva, yes, pot, jezva with incredibly fine ground coffee, almost to the point where it's like powder, and then they serve it with the grinds, yeah. no, no filtering. Sometimes we even wow. do this thing where we heat up the pot in a heated sand pit, so the really? coffee is actually baked, not boiled. Also, I learned this the first time that I met Eggie. So After you finish drinking your coffee, you can tell your fortune. They like lift it upside down and then they look at the coffee grinds and you like come up with a fortune. Uh, there's even an app for that, I think. Like they check the coffee grinds? Yeah, I think so. You can like scan it. <laughs> yeah, that's what? the other thing I noticed. Turkish people have a lot of superstitions wow. and rituals that they kind of live by. Yeah, that's, that's a so whole cool. other story. We'll talk more about that in the next segment. The... So, what is a Turk? This is not a simple question to answer, especially since Turkey has gone through so much change in the past several millennia. First, we need to make the quick distinction between the terms Turk and Turkic. Turk or Turkish are used interchangeably to refer to someone from Turkey. Turkic refers to the Turkic ethnic group, a family broken down into six main branches that extend all the way from Turkey to Siberia. This means, yes, Turkish people are distant cousins of people like Siberians, Kazakhs, Uyghurs, Uzbeks, mm -hmm. Tatars, and so on. Ethnographers speculate that they are even intertwined with Uralic and Uric oh, people John. groups. Wait, so even we're related to them? By weird technical long distance default, kind of, yes. And even Viktor Orban says that they're related to the Turks. <laughs> so there's something going on. That being said, many Turks in Turkey today are probably a genetic admixture of who knows what from anywhere and everywhere that got in contact with the Anatolian Peninsula over the past two millennia. You can find everything from blonde haired, blue eyed Turks to, yes, even a small community of Afro Turks. In any case, if you want to actual visual of how the country breaks down ethnically, uh, here's the demographics graph. First of all, the country has a population of about 85 million people and is host to the largest refugee population on earth. Now here's where things get a little mm -hmm. complicated because Turkey doesn't really have super reliable data on ethnic statistics of their country and the term Turk is defined by the constitution yeah, as- Yeah, because at the end of the day, who the fuck cares? Why do you need to, I don't know, we got this fucking need to categorize everything oh my god i think that's why racism uh, even exists in this world because we always have to label everything come on anyone that is bound to the turkish state through citizenship which means any citizen is considered turk regardless of ethnic background it is also known that there are about 50 non-turkish ethnic groups represented in the country nonetheless independent sociologists have speculated that somewhere around 70 to 80 percent of the country would most likely identify as ethnic turks to whatever degree that may be from there the largest minority group are kurds estimated to be anywhere from 12 up to 20 ish maybe percent of the country from there the remainder of the population are other ethnic groups mostly 
specifically Arabs, Armenians, Greeks, Assyrians, Circassians, Bosniaks, Roma, and so on. We use the Turkish Roma. lira as our currency, we use the Type C and F plug out list, and we drive on the right side of the road. Speaking of driving, uh, I learned that pretty much everybody outside of Istanbul hates the license plate number 34. Yes, we do. Every province Why? has a number, and uh, oh. 34 is Istanbul. And mine is 39. You have it on your <laughs> chest. Yes. 39. Really? Uh, and people <laughs> usually so keep weird. crowbars in their cars in, in, in any case of a fight. In case know? of a fight breaks yeah. out, you guys have weapons. Wait, what the fuck is that? Is that the scary teacher? <laughs> Yes. Language-wise, obviously oh Turkish is the official language. It is written in the Latin script. It was actually adopted in 1928, replacing a modified Arabic script prior to that. Our ancestors actually used our own versions of the old Göktürk and Uyghur alphabet, which had these cool jagged blade-shaped letters that would later inspire the old Hungarian alphabet. Man, I guess we do have some weird connection to you guys. Huh. Now going back to the people of Turkey, as we mentioned, Turkey is also pretty diverse. As mentioned, the Kurds are the largest minority, mostly concentrated in the southeastern provinces bordering Iraq and Syria. We already did a video explaining about the Kurds and who they are, but basically they are a oh, state tyrannic group of people related to the Persians and Pashtuns. They speak their own language, completely unrelated to Turkish, and they are spread across four countries in the Middle East, mostly in Turkey though. And since we're already on the topic, uh, let's just get it over with and rip off the Armenia Band-Aid thing. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. During the transition years of becoming a republic, there were lots of fighting, and the Armenians, being assisted by Russians, was heavily involved. Since then, Armenia has requested the Turkish government government acknowledged the incident as a genocide, whereas Turkey's government, to some extent, will mm. acknowledge that tragedies have occurred. However, the narrative is more nuanced and they would not use the word genocide. This is the basic foundation of the argument. Yeah, in Turkish schools, the incident is taught as tehcir, which is a displacement, and some Ottoman officials who abused their power and mistreated the displaced Armenians were hanged. But keep in mind, this is the official Turkish government story, so this make up your own mind. Make up your own mind. Own this is what the Turkish government says. Yes. Yeah. I mean, no country will ever admit to those kind of things. I mean, it could happen, but to some extent, uh, yeah, your governments they always try to hide the shit that happened in the past. Come on, let's just face it. That that's how it was since the beginning of time. Talk about ah, it in ding, the ding, comments. Ding. Ding, ding, ding. For what it's worth, though, on a mundane, personal level, Turks often can be just befriend people like Armenians, Gur Kurds, and Greeks. It's not like they're like, oh, when they meet each other, it's like they can, they can interact with each other. Yeah, I just made a Greek friend like two days ago. We have that footage. Mike was really cool. Mike, we, we were you, really, uh, you know, hitting it off. You were vibing, man. <laughs> yeah, you're, like you a guys, lot of things are in common. You use like the same words. You like yeah. have the same everything. Like, yeah, like, we're basically from Thrace, both of us. Three same people. It's like, it's like one people, it's crazy. And another thing, being close to conflict zones, Turkey has become the largest refugee host in the world with about mm. 4 million, including nearly 65% wow. of the entire world's registered Syrian refugees. Supposedly the number is up for debate because a lot of people also just cross over and they don't yeah. register, so. It... It's 100% higher than that. Well, with that, let's talk about another part of Turkey's identity, religion. Although secular by constitution, according to the government's old registration system, about 98% of the country claims to be Muslim to whatever degree of actual devotion Ocean, the majority at about 75% being Sunni affiliated with the Hanafi school of jurisprudence. Uh, well, in the past, people were uh, supposed to have a registration for their religion, and if they had just one Muslim parent, they would be automatically registered as Muslim. The data is probably a little bit skewed. For what it's worth, historically, before Ottoman times, the lands Turkey died in used to be very Christian. Like, literally half of all the cities in the New Testament of the Bible that the Apostle Paul visited refer to current renamed cities of Turkey, like Ephesus, Tarsus, Lycia, even the ecumenical patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church is located in Istanbul. It's interesting though because despite the Islamic undertones, Turkey and often their Turkic co cousins can be very superstitious <laughs> and fall into practices like fortune telling and astrology. It's even. huge out here. Yeah. So like technically it's considered haram but like you guys still do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing you'll notice. In Turkey, there's always kind of like a d dichotomy or fusion between the Islamic side and the Turkic side of people's identity. And that's the other thing too. Like a lot of times people kind of conflate you guys with Arabs because uh, no. Islam usually gets tied in with Arabism. Yeah, wait, th th that was because uh, during the Ottoman Empire, uh, it also, the Ottoman Empire also included uh, the Arabic part, right? Saudi Arabia was part of the Ottoman Empire. Or am I tripping? Maybe I'm saying something stupid, but I do think so. Um, so much. Yeah, we're like, like the least Arabized Muslim majority country. But like people don't seem to understand that. <laughs> yeah. And one thing they've upheld for thousands of years are their recreational activities. With that, here's art with the sports part. I had to write something. Yeah. All right, guys, Turkey and sports. But first, guess what? It's his meaning is actually Turkish and it means cinnamon. That's all we need you for, buddy. So, uh, yeah. 
He didn't die. Right? <laughs> First off, they have lots of native sports. Every year on the West Coast, they have the Seljuk Camel, Camel Wrestling, wrestling. Festival, in which male camels would naturally fight each other for mates. So they decided so to make cool. it a sport. That's what they fight for, uh, mates. Uh, sorry, don't cancel me. I mean, but yeah. <laughs> They're heavily monitored by referees and are muzzled so they don't bite each other. Another sport, Jidit, a horseback javelin throwing sport. So here's a clip from the movie Bayaz Melek showing how it's done in a safe and cinematically choreographed manner. And finally, you've probably heard of this one, Turkish oil wrestling. This is most no, famous in the Thrace so region, cool. done on a grass field wearing heavy Damn. water buffalo pants. You have to either expose your opponent's belly upwards, make them fall to the side or carry them for a few steps. They're covered in olive oil to make grappling difficult. Wow. Meaning wrestlers of different weights can wrestle fairly using speed and technique while also repelling crazy. mosquitoes. Why'd you say uh, that as a question? <laughs> Because why are mosquitoes important, right? I'm saying what the olive oil is for. It's to repel mosquitoes. It can be that too. Take out the mosquitoes, bro. Shut up, Mark, just say it. <laughs> Otherwise, Turks have done pretty well in many other contemporary sports. They've gathered over 100 medals in the Olympics since debuting in 1908. Their strongest event being wrestling, with a total of 29 golds as of 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Turkey's women's volleyball teams have won numerous European championship titles and medals. And of course, Turks will tell you so much about their accomplishments mm. in soccer or football. These three teams are the most attention-grabbing clubs in the entire country. When there is a derby between them, the fans go crazy. People get violent. Oh, they are all in Istanbul. Present to stop the fans from stabbing each other. Otherwise, they were super pumped when they reached third place in the 2002 World Cup. And this guy, Hassan Sakura, holds the record. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. Oh my god, he was definitely good. For fastest goal in the World Cup. I mean, there's so much to discuss about Turkish football, but you know, I'm gonna let you guys hash it out in the comments. You guys can call each other little bitches and you can verbally assault each other. All right, guys, that's all I got for you for the Turkey episode. Yeah, that's always happening. If you guys are football. interested in getting some cosmetic work done, you can visit us at beautymill.travel in Turkey. Yeah. That was the lamest, like, most tame exit you've ever had, Art. Screw you, Paul. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you, Art. Have people died at these soccer fights? Uh, I don't think many. Might might have. Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. Don't quote yeah. me on that. That's, that's, that's another thing about your culture. And to talk a little bit more about that, here's Random Hannah. And I'm not even sure if she can do this segment, but let's find out. <laughs> Hannah's busy. Uh, she's in Alabama doing Alabama stuff, so uh, we got Hannah too. Uh, Oh no, it's God. just me, Gabriel, Gab. Barb's is really poor. What? This episode. What? It was not Anna. <laughs> so really getting all he can out of me. So <laughs> Turkish culture, what is it exactly? Turks are obsessed with hygiene. You're often going to find them with handkerchiefs mm. or mendel. And every Turk has a bottle of Colonia. It's like a wow. perfume that they pour on their hands to cool down or if they're just generally stressed. It actually doesn't even originate in Turkey. It comes from Germany. When greeting elders, what they'll do is they'll grab the hand and they'll kind of kiss it. And then they'll put it on the forehead. And then when men greet each other, they shake hands. A boosh. A little concussion there and a little concussion there. Oh, they also do the side hug thing. More my style. Boom. To the left. Boom. To the right. There are a lot of superstitions in Turkey. The most famous one that everybody knows of is Nazar. The evil eye. Nazar. The concept, it exists in other countries, but it is huge in Turkey. It's basically the idea of getting bad luck because someone else is jealous of you. This is why you're going to see really? Nazar porcelain glass in Wow. It's everywhere in Turkey. Sometimes people will take it, they'll put it on things that people will get jealous of. Or they'll even put it on people too. Anything. You know what? <laughs> the rituals are just too, too crazy for me to explain. Here's some of the subscribers who could do a much better job than me. So, we Turks have a lot of quirks. Turks do this thing where they grab their earlobe, make a kiss sound, and knock the wood. It is believed that itching of the right hand means getting unexpected money from somewhere. What? Cutting your nails at night are seen as things. What the f Oh my god! I mean, whatever I remember, I will cut my nails. I don't give a fuck about the time. <laughs> bad luck. Don't lend a sharp object to people. Either spit on it, or else you could be in a fight. Don't eat in a bathroom what? or a bed, or you will get haunted. I was scared for this when I was a kid. You what the hell? The and use household with your right foot. If someone is taking a long trip with their... Wait, is this actually true? I cannot believe that people actually do these kind of things. I mean, there, there is still, you know, also superstitious people in Italy. Like uh, when a uh, fucking ambulance will pass by, they will grab their nuts. <laughs> 
I don't know, and women would touch their uh, left boob, something like that. I don't know, but those are things like uh, they would tell you to do when you're a kid, when you don't know anything. I mean, I would never do that again. <laughs> When I was a kid, I would believe that too. But I think mostly in southern Italy, they are very superstitious that they do. I mean, I don't even know. I'm not superstitious at all, so whatever. Let's are just move people on. generally pour water behind them? If you buy a new pair of shoes, you should let the first person who notices them step on them. Turks have this gesture they do when they get scared. They bite their thumb and push it up. Slippers cannot be upside down at all. When you drop bread on the floor you have to kiss it and put it on your forehead three times don't have too much fun <laughs> don't laugh too much or something bad could happen i expect what when you watch my videos you better laugh so much <laughs> so like that one otherwise <laughs> oh Turkey my is a god entertainment industry even people in brazil that is love crazy Turkish drama probably the most famous drama abroad being this one which translates to what is fat magul's wrong doing what would you do <laughs> fat magul i want to know also turkish movies are really popular as well however turkish humor is so specific that it's almost impossible to translate the inside joke like the mm. cult classic movie Gora and it's highly regarded as the most popular movie from Turkey. Now it's basically about a Turkish scam artist fellow who gets abducted by uh, some extraterrestrials. Now the whole movie is just making fun of Hollywood from the Turkish perspective. <laughs> Finally, Turkey's a home to many festivals and celebrations. This rock festival actually got what? canceled this year. The district administration uh, said it was yeah. too loud, Makes too disturbing sense. for the locals. But are those the real reasons? Oh, we're just never gonna know. And speaking of loud and disturbing, here's our favorite Florida man, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys miss me? I hope everybody's doing well. Let's headphone. get to it. What a hedgehog. We're supposed to talk about music. Uh, well, this is an intense one because, you know, uh, they oh, have a lot of hit. I like, um, oh, fuck. There was a Turkish rapper that I used to like and that uh, type of music, fuck. Uh, I had a Turkish friend. I have a Turkish friend that sometimes will send me some Turkish music. It was pretty cool, but I don't remember. It's probably going to mention history. I mean, who doesn't know the Ottoman Empire and, you know, woo! you'll hear lots of elements similar to Greek, Arab, Romanian and Armenian Turkish music. Hmm. I wonder why. There are three main styles of folk, the Black yeah, folk, Sea, the folk. West Coast, and the South Coast all have their own different styles of folk music. On the Black Sea Coast, the Kemenche is played, and when they dance, there's a lot of shoulder shaking, gesture like this. In the West Coast, there's cool. <laughs> the uh, Zabek dance, Jumbush, I'm sorry if I just absolutely butchered that. Um, it's like a banjo without frets. Um, I don't know if it's tuned in fits or not, I potentially tuned in fifths. In the south, no you hear more arabesque music. It's slower and more depressing, like super depressing. People literally will commit self-harm. Yeah, this guy, self this guy, this guy is the one I've heard. Oh my god, I liked so much his songs. I heard like two or three songs by him. Wow, that was really beautiful. I really enjoyed listening to his concerts music. that are performed by this dude. In fact, the 80s was kind of like the super popular depressing era of music in Turkey. It was kind of like their goth Aww, phase. come on. I wouldn't really call it depressing. Come on. Listed over here. Turkey has a lot of traditional bards, like these guys. Now let's get into some of the modern stuff that goes on in Turkey now. Anatolia rock, this is probably one of the most famous contemporary genres to have come out of Turkey. It's like a fusion of like Western rock, psychedelic, and like saz instruments. Oftentimes they're remixed with traditional Turkish songs. There's so much we could have mentioned, like mm. Turkish pop, and there's a lot of Turkish rap. You need so to react forth. to Turkish but rap. But if you have definitely. something to add, please add it in the comment section down below. I'd love to respond to you guys. Thank you so much to everybody that subscribed to my YouTube channel, The Keith Everett Show. It's been really great. Y'all have a good one. Whee! Thank you, Keith. So by the way, if you want to hear uh, metalcore slash emo music in Turkish language. <laughs> Turkish emo metalcore. Yeah, check out my uh, musical project called Asma. Come on, I had no doubt. I had no doubt that he was an emo singer. Come on! <laughs> my life falls apart. It's on all oh platforms. You can find the music everywhere. As my it life was apart. sounds kind of good. I'm surprised. You, Thank you. you do like all the tracks and the layers. And you, these kids are actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, promotion for you, Ege. Thank you, man. You are in this episode, so we're not. Well, with that, there's only one part left to this complicated nation of Turkey. Their diplomacy. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so definitely it's gonna be hate slash love with Greece and uh, friendship with Germany.
I don't know what else. So as a country at the crossroads of three continents, Turkey is in a position where they can't really isolate, even if they tried. There's geographically too much going on. Let's explain. For one, Indonesia has always been a close ally dating back centuries mm. when the Ottomans supported the people of Aceh against the Portuguese. Since the Cold War, the USA has always been involved in Turkey's diplomatic affairs, especially in concern to Soviet expansion. They joined NATO in 1952, recognized Israel in 1948. Many Turkish Jews voluntarily moved to Israel as well during Zionist movement times, and Turkey even sent troops to fight alongside the Korean War. In fact, Turkey has had close ties to South Korea dating over 2,000 years when the Guk Turks teamed up and assisted the Korean Goguryeo Kingdom against the Tang Dynasty Chinese forces in conflict times. Since then, they've maintained a historical alliance based on economic, cultural, and military traits all the way up to the Korean War. Today, about 460 fallen Turkish soldiers are buried in honor at the Hero Cemetery in Busan. Bosniaks from Bosnia and Herzegovina are also huge fans. They are kind of like the descendants of European Muslims that converted during Ottoman times. Many have even moved to Turkey as well and started business and have communities. Then we get to their central. I think during the Ottoman Empire, the language they were speaking was not even Turkish. It was a Serbo-Croatian, right? Asian cousins. Turks have a platonic love for their Central Asian cousins like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan, and so on. They'll always take up the opportunity to follow up and chat. Yeah, Turkmenistan is a little bit of a different story due to their government's isolationist policies. But as people, the Turkmens and Turks are probably the closest in Central Asia because of the Oguz tribe affiliation. Germany is their largest import and export partner, and they have the largest Turkish diaspora outside of Turkey so there has always been a connection between them. Turks tend to have strong opinions about the Turkish diaspora in Germany, but that's a whole other story that we do not want to get into right now. In regards to Cyprus, obviously we already explained in the Cyprus episode, the northern Turkish populated yeah. part is a self-proclaimed independent nation that only Turkey recognizes, so of course there is a close connection there. Turks tend to call northern Cyprus Yavru Vatan, which means little homeland. But keep in mind, Cypriot Turks don't actually really like this phrase. When it comes to their best friends, however, every Turk I've talked to has said one country, Azerbaijan. They have a phrase, one nation, two states. If the Central Asian really? Turkic nations are cousins, then the Turks and Azerbaijanis are siblings. They have mutually intelligible dialects, they intermarry a lot, each is super welcome in each other's country. Yeah, Overall, no they are one blood, Pretty always have been, always will be. All right, and in conclusion, Ege, you are the Turk. You get the honor. Speak from the heart. Go! It's so complicated. It has a history going back millennia. Just like the land, it has blended people from the Aegean, Mediterranean, Mesopotamian, Europe, and Middle East, ancient Turkics. Uh, it's secular, but also has a Muslim undertone. The politics are always insane. There is never a quiet moment. And no matter how many crowbars you get in the face from road rage, we always dish it out over a tulip glass of tea. I think that uh, summarizes it great, Ege. Thank you so much for being in the Turkey you, episode. And uh, stay tuned, Turkmenistan is coming up next. Wow, that was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. I really enjoyed this episode, you know? 25 minutes of episode, but it just flew by the time. I really liked this video. So hope you've enjoyed my reaction as well. If you want to share something more in the comment section, maybe tell me which other videos I can check out to learn more about this beautiful country. Let me know also down in the comments because I really want to travel to Turkey. I mean, I'm kind of tired with money right now, but uh, I'm planning in November, maybe December, traveling to Turkey and, you know, just have a trip there, have some fun, learn new things, make new friends and whatever you know <laughs> so yeah guys uh, we we are at the end of this video hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to like smash the subscribe button and i will see you next time